Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon White version! Last time, we challenged the Striden City Gym, and with no thanks to our starter and all the thanks to a random little girl's pants here, we emerged victorious and earned our first badge. Okay, that's not completely true. Ottawa did do most of the work, finishing off the first of the two Pokemon and putting a huge dent in the second one. Pants here only finished the job, so I'm willing to say it's a group effort, even if this enrages Blair with his pixel aliasing showing his emotions. After we emerged victorious from the gym, we ran into Fennel, who, um, um, Professor Juniper wanted us to meet. She just simply wanted us to head off to the Dream Yard to go look for the Dream Mist that Muna gives off in the Dream Yard. Thank you for making me sound like a redundant idiot. Appreciate you. This time, we're going to be doing that as well as heading around the area, seeing some new things we can do now that we have our badge. Starting off, are you a trainer? Do you use the PC at Pokemon Centers? I am Amanita. I maintain the box system. Do you know about the battle box? Well, I do, but let's go over it real quick anyway. Impressive. Oh, no, I, 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 oh, okay. She actually is telling us about it anyway, so yeah, they tell you about that. It's kind of a serious tradition. Uh, if there's a Pokemon you use often in your battles, you can register it in the battle box. Yes. We have a PC right here, so I see no reason not to show this really quick. If we go to a uh, battle box down here, it is simply a box that is not your party that has six slots in it. Might be tiny, but it's kind of nice for storing a team when you're off doing other things. Maybe you're a competitive battler. It's pretty useful. And I might want to say that in all of her years of research, Juniper could not answer the question that I just did. I have answered, who is someone? Yes, it is now marked as Amanita's PC after we have done that. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. It's a name that I've never heard outside of this game, so I don't know if I'm saying it right or not. Now, as we go outside, there's something that I'm a little bit overdue on checking out. In the southeastern house, is it you? Oh, trainer, do you have enough Pokeballs? Okay, don't be shy, take this with you. You get a free Great Ball from this guy. Definitely helpful, no reason not to get it. No real harm done that I haven't grabbed it before this point because there haven't been any new Pokemon for us to go out and catch. But now that we have one badge, that is about to change. As we go down back onto Route 2, I'm gonna run well, I was going to run back and forth really quick, hoping to make something cool happen, and then uh, that didn't happen. Okay. Let's see if Ottawa can handle this battle really quick. Okay, so if I can actually get to the point, not run into more random wild Pokemon. What happens is, if you move around only after you have at least one badge on a route that has grass, something interesting may happen. Yes! You see that rustling bit of grass? That's something that's a little bit new. Should we go into it? Dramatic battle music! What's this mean? I don't know. No, seriously. I don't know. Audino is a Pokemon of gimmicks, right down to the pronunciation of its name. <laughs> For one, it has an unusually high experience yield when it's defeated. It's nowhere near the highest of any Pokemon ever, like some people might say, but it's still pretty darn good and it's reliably encountered because it's almost always in rustling grass. And of course, you can see rustling grass on the field, so that makes it a great Pokemon to grind against. For two, Regenerator is a rare ability that is amazing if you are playing with shift battles. That would be reason enough to consider it on its own because you're gonna be benefiting from it all the time if you're playing on that difficulty. And for three, it learns almost every TM move in the game to the point where there's almost as many possible move sets for Autono as there are Autono themselves. It also has very respectable stats for right now, and it's also physically bulky, which is a bit unique, since almost all normal types are just special walls, and this one's, well, both. But, and here it comes. It works best right now because it's pretty likely to fall behind because its stats aren't anything special later on. If you still want to use it, I wouldn't say that it's awful, and really the most fun thing to do with it is collecting lots and lots of TMs, as many as you can, and just retooling Odno's moveset for each new area so that it can just do whatever is required there. I'm glad that of all games, the one that made TMs infinite use introduced a Pokemon with high TM compatibility, because it does a great job showcasing something that wasn't possible before now. Well, okay, it was possible, just a very stupid choice, but you know what I mean. No doubt, it's pretty great grinding, I say, as it hangs on with one little sliver of health. Maybe I should have caught that because it is a little bit of an honor to survive a hit from a level 15 when you're level 4, even if you do have a lot of HP still. Uh, not only is it great running back and forth and just running into Odno fairly often and reliably to get lots of experience, but it also recharges 
your pickup abilities and you can get things, well, hopefully better than the measly full heal that I got right there. That's not the only reason that I came back down into this route. It was just kind of a convenient thing that we could do while we taught our cut HM to at least one of our Pokemon. I don't know, well, okay, I guess I do actually know who I want to teach this to. Is that, hold on. I just want to check something really quick here. Uh, tackle is 50 power. That's also, okay, no. It's 95% accuracy. There's no reason I would ever want to teach that. I was just trying to make sure that it wasn't 100% accurate, so I wasn't missing out on anything from not teaching it tackle. I know that HM moves are hard to forget like they told us, but I just wanted to check that to be absolutely sure. That settles it. It's going on 721st. And actually, I want to talk to you about 721st here. I don't think that's a very good name for it. Don't get me wrong, I find Panseer to be frustrating to raise as much as the next guy, but it did win that gym battle for us. And even though, yeah, that's totally fair that Vine Whip was doing a third of my health when I resisted it, and I was doing a third of a fourth of their health with having the type advantage, that might have been annoying, but it still won the gym battle for us no less. And I think that I want to give it a more, less, a, a more less mean name. I guess I could have just said a less mean name though, but you know me and my roundabout way of saying things, of course. And I'm being pretty roundabout in saying that I want your opinion. Using hashtag Chugamon, I thought of it on the spot, on Twitter or by responding to the Facebook comments for this video's post, I want to hear what you think we should name this Panseer. It's not a permanent member of our team whatsoever, but it is going to be sticking around for a little bit longer. and. I do want to hear what you think we should name it. It'll be a while before we can actually change its name, but I don't think I'm alone in saying that it deserves a bit more credit than I've been giving it credit for. Now that we're healed, Pokemon Center is another good stop after getting your first badge. Just about every time that you earn a badge, Clerk Number One's inventory changes, and this is why I said it doesn't suck quite as much ass as you thought it might have if Clerk Number One's inventory is always the same from town to town, because previously he only had a potion and a Pokeball, but now, you can buy Great Balls, you can buy Super Potions, you can buy Antidotes that heal off Poison. Paralyze heals, heal Paralyze, Awakening heals Sleep, Burn heals Burn, Ice heals Frozen status, and uh, Escape Rub lets you escape from dungeons, and we've already gone over Repels. I think we also went over Escape Rubs before, so I was only slightly redundant that time. We're gonna buy a few Repels because of course we are. I don't want us to spend eternities in some of these routes when we're just backtracking or when we've kind of already seen all that it has to offer. What do you have to say there, Cue Ball? Have you been catching Pokemon? You bet I have. When you have more Pokemon, you're less likely to lose in battles, and it's more fun to look at your Pokedex and PC box. I guess my one PC box is a little bit more fun with Lillipoop in it than if it didn't. Um, all right. Well, that's everything I wanted to do around town. We got the Great Ball. We found out about Audino and what you can do to grind for experience, offsetting that weird experience mechanic a little bit. So I guess we'll go ahead and cut this down. That is the one and only time that you ever have to use cut in the entire game. And people don't think this is the best game in the series, why? Hi Blair, are you looking for the mysterious Pokemon too? I'm just really, really wondering how showing dreams works. I'd like to know that a little bit as well. Oh. Hey, did you hear an odd sound coming from the other side of that wall? Come on, let's go see. Oh, I see, let's go see, letting me go first, yes. Let's go indeed. Oh wait! We found you, Muna. Come on, come on, make some dream mist. Huh? Who are you? What are you doing? Are you talking to us? We're Team Plasma. We battle day and night to liberate Pokemon from foolish humans. What are we doing? The Pokemon Muna and Musharna emit a mysterious vapor called Dream Mist, which shows people's dreams. We're gonna use that to make people want to release their Pokemon. We'll show them dreams to manipulate their hearts. Come on, spit out that Dream Mist. You're kicking a Pokemon to make it give off Dream Mist? That's mean, why? Your trainers too, right? That's right. We're Pokemon trainers too, but we're fighting for a different reason. Unlike you two, we're fighting for the freedom of Pokemon. And setting Pokemon free means that we win Pokemon battles and take Pokemon by force. So on that note, we are gonna rescue your Pokemon from you. What, don't hurt Blair!
Uh, that's a cool intro and this song is great. Now, right there, in the very first encounter that you ever have with Team Plasma Grunts, I need to draw attention to those lines. So often, all over the internet, Team Plasma is so stupid and hypocritical. They want to liberate Pokemon from humans, but they battle with Pokemon themselves. They're so hypocritical. Oh my god, it's so stupid. How did they not see such a massive plot hole? It is explained right there in their first appearance that they are only using Pokemon out of necessity to steal other trainers' Pokemon when they're defenseless after winning against them in battle so that they can release them back into nature and after their goal is accomplished, presumably they would release their Pokemon as well. It's established from the very first time that you ever see them using Pokemon of their own. I thought it was very clearly explained. I've never thought it was hypocritical and I've never understood why so many people think this way because there it is. Sorry, I just had to do that, okay. Yeah, you were seriously, were you not taking them seriously because they're kids? <laughs> well, whatever, I'm next. Yeah, I think Team Plasma is fine. They got a really cool logo right there as the fight gets started and their designs look a little weird. They're meant to be wearing uh, male uniforms. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, yes, Team Plasma, Postmen of America. <laughs> no. They, uh, I mean to say that they're wearing the male of medieval knights. It doesn't look quite right in the in-game graphics, but that is what they're meant to be wearing, and when you look at them knowing that, I think they look pretty cool, and yeah, I don't have issues with them. Of course, I'm not terribly afraid of you when you're using something like a purloin, though. <laughs> Almost to level 16. And who doesn't love that victory theme along with them saying, PLASMA, whenever they're defeated. They're great. I can't believe we lost. I know! Who could have ever seen it coming when you were only using a purloin? You should have listened to my advice, you see. Okay, now, I'm not taking credit for coming up with the so original idea that purloin is not very good. Come on, make with the dream mist! Knock it off! What are you two doing goofing off? We, Team Plasma, shall separate Pokémon from foolish people. If you cannot fulfill your duties... Th this isn't... Getsus when he's gathering followers, or Getsus when he's trying to control people by tricking them with speeches! Yeah, this is Getsus when a plan has failed and he's about to issue punishment. At any rate, let's hurry and say we're sorry so he forgives us. Which is why they ran away from him to apologize to him. <laughs> what was that just now? That person called Getsus appeared all over the place and it wasn't real, right? Could it have been a dream? And that Pokemon. Oh! I couldn't wait, so I came over. Is that Musharna? Did something happen? <laughs> Great reaction to a Pokeball just dropping out of its butt. Oh, Fennel. Well, you see, he, Muna he was here, but Team Plasma and Muna and Musharna came and it showed us something like a dream? And then Team Plasma, I think I followed that. See, Musharna evolves from Muna. So seeing Muna in trouble, it used its power, make, its power making dreams into reality to save Muna. Which means, wait a second. this dream mist. With this, I can complete my research. You two come to my house later, okay? Phew, how random was that? Blair, why don't you go to Fennel's house? Me? Well, I'm gonna look for the Pokemon we saw just now. You do that, Bianca, and we're kinda sorta gonna do the same. We want to explore the dream yard a little bit. First, let's give our repels a test drive because we sure as heck do need them. Uh, yeah, there we go. As much as I love listening to this wild battle theme, I don't want to subject you to how long everything would take because encounter rates are ridiculously high. Get another Pokeball right there. Definitely long overdue for catching something or other. Uh, got rustling grass right there. You know what? I'm going to take that. Okay. Well, while we're going around, there are, as you would guess, exactly two new encounters in this area. I wonder what they are. Let's get started with Muna. A psychic type tank. Okay, interesting idea. Welcome to Unova, everyone. 
Muna is our first Pokemon to evolve with a Moonstone, which we're not far away from getting at all. But as great as that sounds, you don't want to evolve it too soon. It's very impressive that it gets Psybeam at only level 11, and it also gets Hypnosis at a low level, definitely giving Patrat a run for its money. The big problem is that it doesn't learn Psychic until level 37, and there's no TM for it during the main adventure. You're gonna be lugging around this weak Muna for just so long, and speaking of someone who's done it, it's tough. While it does learn other good TMs, it's a huge disappointment having to hold out that long unevolved that it might just make it unviable for most people. I mean, come on! It has 25 attack, and its strongest move before then is Zen Headbutt. I don't know what they were expecting you to do with it. Well, let's see if we can do better with this. If you're patient enough to wait for a 5% encounter rate in Rustling Grass, you can encounter an already evolved Musharna. This will always be level 11 and will always have the moveset of Defense Curl, Lucky Chance, Psybeam, and Hypnosis, which it is stuck for for life unless you use TMs. But all is not bad with this one. Should you happen to run into it, it has by far the highest stats of anything we've seen up to this point. It's factually the strongest Pokemon available for a long time, and it would make for a ruthlessly strong temporary team member, or maybe even a permanent team member, if you're willing to get past the fact that it's probably not going to learn Psychic for a long time. One of the super cool things about Muna is that this Pokemon was foreshadowed all the way back in Pokemon Red and Blue. There was a lass on Route 4 who would say that she wished there was a pink Pokemon with a floral pattern on it, and now there is. Just one of those little things that you never know what tiny little throwaway lines might actually be referencing features in a future game. It's pretty cool. There were a few other minor items that we picked up, but nothing else to really see here other than our progress was being impeded by a traffic cone, which I think is a new record in lame, beating out even the little tiny shrubs that block your way. But for now, let's heal and get back to Fennel's house. We're pretty darn good. I say we're sitting pretty pretty. I don't think we ever talked to the people on the first floor of Fennel's house. Is this like her husband and family? After a battle, to my surprise, my Pokemon evolved and changed its appearance. Ooh, maybe that'll be us in the very near future. Some evolve and some don't. Pokemon really are mysterious creatures. And some of them, and some of them, even though you got them to level 30 10 years ago, they didn't evolve then, but now suddenly as a species, they all decided to start evolving at level 30 now. Funny how nature works. Fennel. Ta-da! Thanks to you, I got some Dream Mist, and now I can collect save files of various trainers! Again, I don't have the heart to let you down, I'm sorry. I love how she's a dream scientist and she's super hyper. Oh, that's the joke. <laughs> Thank you very much! As a token of my appreciation, I'll, I will give you the Sea Gear to use. Sea Gear is a device related to communications such as infrared connection or Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Well, one out of two ain't bad. Was it sitting on the computer desk or something? I don't get it. Uh, oh, okay, it's telling us to turn this off and airplanes and hospitals where wireless communications are prohibited. So basically airplane mode. Um, every time that you start up the game, it'll ask you if you want to have this on, which, yeah, is as annoying as it sounds when you're mashing A through the title sequence and not really paying attention and you accidentally enable it, but hey, at least now we're not gonna set the world record for most boring bottom screen for the whole game. You see, the C gear was activated and the screen showed up. You can attach the question mark icon to the bottom right of the screen. You can read about the Sea Gear. About Game Sync, I'd like to explain a little more about the system to collect trainer save files. Do you have a little time to learn more? Sure we do. Now, Game Sync can retrieve memories of sleeping Pokemon using Dream Mist. That's right, we collect save files of trainers from all over the world. What's more, we learned that if you use Game Sync to make a Pokemon sleep, it will have dreams. Then when you wake up, that Pokemon in its it, that poke bleh. Then when you wake up that Pokemon, its dreams becomes the reality in a space called Entralink in the middle of the Unova region. Isn't Game Sync interesting? If you like, please send your save file. I've summed up the details in a PC, so please check it if you ever get a chance. Oh, trainer, thank you for so much for helping Fennel. This is from me. Please take it. Don't be shy. The Pal Pad. You can register your friends in your pal pad. After you register, you can link with those friends over Nintendo Wi-Fi connection to do all kinds of fun things. You can trade Pokemon, catch you, uh, you can trade Pokemon, challenge your friends to battle, and so on. Let me give you a quick how-to on registering your friends that we don't need to hear because this doesn't even work anymore, but it was kind of nice that you could add them over local wireless at the time. Okay, that was very long for something that we can no longer even do. Well, 
I'm gonna give you a bit of a primer on how things used to be here. We tap this online notification that is flashing. By tapping this big old button called Game Sync, you will get an error message every single time that you press it. But it didn't always return with an error message. What it would do is it would send usage data of your save file to a website called Pokemon Global Link. Modern Pokemon players might know this because it is still in use today in various Pokemon games. However, I believe this iteration of it to be the most in-depth it ever got. It didn't just merely report progress that you've made in your save file. Like she said, you could have Pokemon go to sleep and have dreams. Should you have done this, you could enter Pokemon Dream World from the website, which in and of itself was kind of a game on its own. And this is about to open quite the rabbit hole, so I'm going to do my best to illustrate to you what Pokemon Dream World was like for those who are curious, and also just because information on it is, I wouldn't say scarce, but anything concrete like screenshots or video aren't exactly common. So, first of all, in going over all this, thanks so, so ever much to Maryland for supplying this footage. Like I said, Dream World footage is rare, and I never actually recorded any of my own footage back when it still existed. The most basic workings of Dream World involved tucking in a Pokemon, which you were limited to do only once every 20 hours, and then you had access to the Dream World, which was limited to one hour per Pokemon that you tucked in. So why would they limit your time in here? Well, entering it was actually a boon for you, kind of like grabbing treasure in a bonus game. One of the main attractions of Dream World was the mini-games. In playing these browser-based games, you would earn Dream Points. Among other things, these convert into experience points for the sleeping Pokémon, possibly causing it to even level up passively while you play. Another really major part of Dream World was the appeal of having a home that could be decorated to your liking, with tons of furniture items and customization options to collect. It's the closest thing to secret bases, and it's gone. A lot of furniture items could be obtained through timed events, but when they weren't, this gets into the currency of Dream World, which was berries. These could be found periodically throughout the Dream World or grown in the garden near your home. If the player had earned enough total Dream Points through all their play sessions, it would allow more spaces to grow more berries. You could transfer these berries as well as other items found in the Dream World to your black or white games. This was the only way to grow berries, and it's gone. Great forward thinking there, locking all these basic functions behind internet connectivity. That's never going to come back to bite any games being released today in the ass. Nope. But seriously, even though the Dream World shut down long ago and you can no longer tuck in new Pokemon, sync your save file to it, or obtain those items, you might have a silver lining here if the news blindsided you or you heard about it too late. At the time of making this video, I don't know how long this is still going to be true for. But to this very day, Pokemon that were previously tucked in may still be woken up and gotten back. Any Pokemon that you left in there and never reclaimed are not lost. Check it, see if you have anything that you've left behind. And just like Muna, the Pokemon that powers this dream feature, this feature of being able to interact with the dreams of Pokemon was also foreshadowed all the way back in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Just another one of those little details that help you fully appreciate these more modern games if you've played the old ones too. It's really cool that they do that. Now, I've saved the biggest part for last. There were Pokemon that could be obtained within the Dream World. These Pokemon could have unique abilities that the same species caught in the wild would not normally have. Generally, these abilities were very interesting and in that they would change a Pokemon's playstyle completely. This is a mechanic known as Hidden Abilities, and I am certain that up to this point, people have been informing me that, you know, hey, come on, how could you say that Snivy is bad? What, you're not even going to mention that it can have Contrary for its ability, and that ability is amazing and makes it actually competitively viable? Or, you know, come on, how could you ever think that Lillipup is one of only two Unova families to have Intimidate for their ability? And there's others that have it through their Hidden Abilities too, you know? I know! <laughs> Okay, no, I'm seriously not upset over it, though, but I've been kind of saving this for now, and I thought it'd be kind of silly to bring it up a little bit sooner than this, which is why I've been waiting on it. With the exception of a whopping two Pokemon in the entire game that have their dream abilities available normally, any sort of way of getting Pokemon with these abilities died when Nintendo Wi-Fi connection shut down, or actually even earlier than that when Pokemon Global Link for 5th Gen shut down. 
there is no way to get these dream abilities in game normally whatsoever anymore. As such, that is why I am not mentioning them in any sort of bios unless they're actually obtainable, because they might as well be completely unavailable in the present day for anyone going back and playing this now. So there you go, a little retrospective on what Pokemon Global Link used to be like. There are some various other functions of the Sea Gear that we could talk about. Um, previously, by participating in events, you could get downloadable skins for your Sea Gear that were pretty nice looking. But beyond that, I don't want to go over the pie chart icon down there in the corner. Believe it or not, that's not the color theme selector, even though that's what I think of before I think of a pie chart. That's not relevant to us right now, and we can't do everything with that at the current time. Instead, I want to go over the things that we actually can do in the Sea Gear now that we have gone over all the stuff that we can no longer do. Now we're going to move on to the rest of the Sea Gear, and I want to let you know right here and now that the remainder of this video is going to be spent talking about multiplayer features and not making any additional story progress, just in case you don't happen to be interested in that. This is not going to be a regular occurrence, however. There's not that many multiplayer features introduced in this game, so we're not going to be doing multiplayer stuff terribly often. This is just a particularly big feature that I felt deserved its own segment. So for the infrared and wireless sections, because it would be a little bit weird to be talking about them by myself, I have brought a guest to join us for a few minutes so that we may show all that these have to offer. I have brought with me the greatest and most true expert in all of Pokemon. Introduce yourself! Hello, I am a Sayanoa. How are you today? I am very good. How <laughs> about you today? Eh. I'm here. Well, I killed the mood. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I'm anyway, kidding, so I'm yeah. kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm doing good. Okay. Uh, doing well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, now I'm not doing that well. Uh, why must I care so much about grammar? But uh, anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, you're here today to talk with us a little bit about the um, other features that we can do in the Sea Gear. Yes. And um, what? I just said yes. Oh, I thought yes. you just, I thought you were saying S, like you were going to say sea gear in a really cool <laughs> way. Or I'm just hissing at you. <laughs> One or the other, really. Uh, so starting off, uh, down here, this little strip that you don't even think you can interact with at first glance, there are 10 little lines in it. For each one, there is somebody nearby that is currently on their sea gear, so you know exactly how many people around you locally there are to play with. I see one little jelly bean. Can be a little helpful if you're going around <laughs> a convention, and yeah, they kind of do look like jelly beans, actually. <laughs> um, so you can see who's around here. Um, if I were to tap on you, I can see that you have not filled in your profile whatsoever. I've been playing for two hours and 20 minutes, so no surprise there. hey -o. Wow, uh, nobody has ever thanked you in your entire existence. What a depressing life. I'm so <laughs> sad. But I'm probably in the same boat. I can see exactly where you are on the Unova map, and um, also how long you've been in wireless range of me. You can see how long it took us to actually get this started. 17 minutes and two, or 17 minutes and two seconds. I was about to say 17 hours and two minutes, but <laughs> that'd be kind of depressing, uh, even for us. Is, is that the time thing up there? Uh, when you tap on them on the Unova map, yes. Um, oh, so that'll show that how long you've been connected. In addition, uh, you can send messages to them, possibly as lewd as you want, though, but you're limited <laughs> oh by eight my. characters, so there's only a couple million possible combinations, and there aren't that many lewd things that you could say in that relative to higher letter limits. I'm sure you can if you get creative about it. There you go. Something very rude headed your way. How awful of me. Great. Did you get it? No. Did you get mine? Oh, wait! Oh! You... Oh, oh, there it is! <laughs> wait, I'm not mean! <laughs> I was trying to, like... <laughs> okay, no. Uh, so there's that. Uh, you can also tap this little smiley face to thank them. I will give you the first thanks you have ever received in your entire life. I'm not thanking you. You called me mean. You called me lewd. I just said lewd. You're the one who's taking it personally and is just like, oh, that was directed at me, isn't it? Yeah, when it really yeah, wasn't. Yeah. I was just shouting out into the space, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, if you would like to continue, uh, we now have the infrared tab that I want to tap on really quickly. Uh, with this, you can battle and trade without really needing to connect over wireless. It's very instantaneous. And for now, we're going to go into trade just really quick to kind of see what that looks like now because it's pretty neat. To make this work, I am currently squatting in the middle of my floor, holding my system that is chained down by multiple cables. This is great. <laughs> uh, I'm having a grand old time. Face your system. Time. Face your system. Yes, I know. I know. I am no. trying to get my mic set up too. You're no. I'm not. I'm not being impatient with you. It's just you have a chair, and I'm like squatting. So you are kneeling. kneeling you yeah. are not squatting. It's okay. I am kneeling very awkwardly because my computer is in the way, so I'm having to be really careful about it and. Uh, 
This Excuses. Is, this is not gonna work, is it? Uh, is that as far as it will go? This is as far as I can reach. Is that as far as you can reach? This is as far as I can go. Do they have to be touching or something? Uh, hold it a little flatter than that. Oh, 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 I have caught Lilla Pop, and this is something that I Yay! wanted to show off, is that one of the greatest of all improvements is that the trading interface is brilliant and super fast. You can look through your PC boxes, you can look through your party, you can... Burk? Burk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. This is Burk. So there's a good reason why we're doing a trade. It actually is important for something later on that we'll be seeing, well, much later. Uh, so I do have a good reason for doing this trade that you'll be seeing in due time. But I'm going to offer you my Lilla Pop. I will give you my Burk. You can kind of look at the Pokemon that are being offered for trade, and you can actually trade up to three Pokemon at a time. That's pretty nice. Which is super, super nice. Whenever you just have multiple things that you need to trade or trade back or something like that, it's really quick. Uh, as you can see, that trade animation was almost instantaneous. Don't have the interference with wireless, but it kind of comes at the cost of my spine. <laughs> <laughs> my so, arm. Yeah. Your uh, spine and my arm. I mean, you can live without an arm. I can't live without a spine. Arguable. Arguable? <laughs> that you have worse things coming to your spine, Emil. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to also say, okay, so the other thing that we can do over infrared is uh, battling. But there is actually special battling rules that you can do in infrared, which is the Wonder Launcher, allowing you to build up points based on your actions in battle, which you can then use to buy items to use on your Pokemon in the middle of a multiplayer fight. I think it's a pretty cool idea. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do with it where maybe you might want to save your points for a better item later on in battle. Maybe you might just want to heal a little bit so you can turn a two-hit KO into a three-hit KO. It leads to a lot of interesting turnarounds and strategies, and it's something that not many people talk about. If you've never given it a go, see if you like it. Maybe give it a try. The items range anywhere from a regular old potion to a max revive, depending on if you can afford it. And there's even some exclusive items like the item merge, which forces your Pokemon into consuming its hold item when you use it. And also some stuff like X items that'll raise your stats two, three, or even six stages. I mean, multiple stage X items were not a mechanic otherwise until much later, but here they are right now. All right, so next up we got the wireless tab uh, for the next thing I want to do. Entralink is a massive... I wasn't going into it yet. Oh. Uh, uh, Entralink oh. is a massive feature that I feel deserves its own separate video, so I am not going over it here. Oh. We'll be doing it much, much later because it would be an even more big rabbit hole in the center of this already large rabbit well, hole. Well, if it makes you feel better, it didn't let me go in anyway, so All right. it just kicked me out. It's like, nope, you can't do this. Yeah, so we can't do that yet. Can't really show everything that has to offer, so we're saving that for later. Instead, we're going to go into, um, we're gonna go into the X-Trans Skyver here. And this is exactly what you think it is in that it's a video chat program that you can use to communicate with other people. And as such, uh, I got, uh, I'm ready to go in whenever you are. Wait, wait. Huh. Thankfully, this is actually over wireless, so we don't have to be like, you know, oh, thank God. Okay. on the surface of each other's systems to be able to do this. We found the problem. To communicate locally over this thing, you actually have to add each other as friends. You can do this I over- I was right. You Yeah, you were. Uh, you can do this over local, um, even though Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection no longer exists. I don't know why you would do this, because you'd think that, I don't know, maybe they just don't want people preying on other people by going into this thing. I don't really know, but hey. Okay. Uh, where exactly do I go again? Uh, Wireless or right? Go oh. to the cross, yeah. Okay, I'm calling you. Wow, that's actually kind of cool. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Wow. Oh my god, yours oh, actually god. turned out really good. <laughs> Holy god. Glad, glad you like actually really Glad funny. you like amazing uh, okay. stunning frame rate, isn't it? <laughs> That's amazing. I know, isn't it great? Yeah, just having video chat over this when you could walk over and just talk to that person. <laughs> I don't know why they spent the resources on it and you could only do this if you're playing on at least a DSi or later, but yeah, use the front facing camera. 
I do not have any free hands because of the very awkward pose I'm having to be in in order to do this, though. But you can actually draw on each other and do some other fun stuff. Uh, there's no mini games though. That was you not in this version of the um, of this of this uh, feature. But that's that. Quick overview. And now for the last thing that we're going to be seeing today, we're going to go into infrared once again. And I'm really feeling check. Oh boy. <laughs> So the feeling check is a little fun mini game that you can play with someone else. Uh, requires two people to play. <laughs> so, oh uh, are you in? I am in. Let's begin check. Well, what are your predictions here? Well, okay, I I do have this. Okay, originally Maryland was going to be the person who was going to join us for this video. Right. And him and I did this for the first time with each other like a year ago. And when we did this. Our, our record was exactly 69%. So That's hilarious. I'm looking to see if we can do that. I predict a 3%. Okay. Okay. Create an infrared okay. connection. Tap the touchscreen 10 times in any rhythm you like. Is that more I than 10? Check I think complete. My, I think mine was more than 10. Check the connection with the other trainer. Yeah, it wasn't stopping, so I was like, wait, did I miscount? Yeah, I did same. it two more times. <laughs> uh, place your left thumb on the outline. Left thumb? Gently. What is gentle? This is really bad. It's like not recognizing my... Th okay, keep your left thumb steady. Put your right thumb on the other outline. I'm still on the left thumb. Oh, there it goes. I'm just too fast at feeling. Let's see. I'm worried this recording is not fine because of just how far I've had to stretch to, like, make this connect at all. <laughs> I'm trying really uh, hard. Okay. Okay, check complete. Check connection. Come on. You, you can, can do, do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> we really are oh in sync. Oh, my God. Holy crap. If this thing does not give us an excellent score, it's just straight up wrong at this point. Okay, let's see. Feeling check. It shows that 81% Oh, rigby. my God. Everyone's quite envious of us, too. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, wow, okay. I can live with those results. Okay, you get two sweethearts for your medicine case, or however many you get based on what your rank is. Uh, sweethearts are a bit of a special item. I don't believe they can be obtained any other way. Um, they are, I believe, just full heals. Uh, let's see. Uh, wait, what? Where? Oh, I was already on it, yeah. Uh, oh, no, it restores HP by 20 points. Okay, no, I was mistaking it for... Every region seemingly introducing a new full heal item, though, but no, it's, it's just one <laughs> HP. So it's a cute little item that you can get for free by just doing this with different people. Um, heck of a lot better than, hey, if you pre-order right now and spend $80 on the special edition, we'll give you 20 potions. <laughs> so <laughs> That's fair enough. It's much more affordable and by the, with the price of free. <laughs> All right, well, that's really all we can go over with the sea gear for right now. Um, there are other things we can do. Um, now, technically, I didn't need you to show this off, though, but I understand you have a much bigger beef with your interface than mine. Oh. Because, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. I don't have a problem with my interface because <laughs> it's hexagons. But Mine's like freaking circle hearts everywhere. Why? If you want to adjust your layout, you tap this little wrench icon down here and you can change what every segment does and you can greatly reduce the number of visible segments on it. Wait, what? Yeah. You can customize what every segment is if it's Wait, wireless, what if it's wrench? online. I don't even have a freaking wrench on it's, mine. It's the third from the left. It's a weird looking wrench. It's it's like it's almost like one of those like text cursors that you see in word processor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you tap on that, you can customize your screen and you can have as many or as few segments for everything as you want. Uh, people have made some pretty nice looking um, layouts with this though, and I figured you might like to know that. I mean, it doesn't change it off of hearts, but I mean, I guess it's something. Yeah, you could have fewer hearts at least. <laughs> But I mean, okay. <laughs> that makes me sound cold hearted. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cut of your jib. 81% of the time. But, uh, you know, since you're such a big Pokemon expert, uh, Pokemon LP from you when? <laughs> Emil, we have discussed this. Okay, I understand. Anyway, um, <laughs> you Pokemon people scare me. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there right now. You guys, like. It's scary being a not Pokemon expert. 
Uh, I'm gonna get chewed up and spat out again. Thank I'm, you. I'm sure plenty of people would argue with you that I'm not an expert, but anyway, um, that's all for the sea gear. Um, this ran a little bit long though, but hopefully that gives you an idea of everything that you can do with it and makes it seem a little bit more appealing than the really bland pattern that was on the bottom screen. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for having me over. Of course. And um, this was fun. Yeah. <laughs> fun for you, not for my spine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next time on Pokemon. Hey, it's not for my arm. Next time on Pokemon Black and White. I'm interrupting you. We are going to be leaving <laughs> Striaton City and get a move on with our journey <laughs> now that we have done everything we can do around town. See you guys then. Bye. <laughs> are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> You're wheezing.